combining faith, theology, the Bhagavad Gita, and the goals of creating a harmonious civilization. Meditating upon the words of the Gita and great gurus, um, including from uh, Krishna consciousness, we feel like it is a spiritual revelation. If we do comparative politics, for example, the national flag of China, we note that it has four stars uh, representing the, the four groups inherent to the Chinese civilization, right? But in the Bhagavad Gita, it describes how the Lord God, the Supreme Person of Godhead, Lord Krishna, made mankind. And these are not concepts of, of caste or class, they're based on concepts of the intrinsic individual nature, based on the intrinsic, based on the intrinsic individual self-nature. In the Bhagavad Gita, we learn that basically there are there there is this concept of of a spiritual high level concept of of the varna, and in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes how he made man. Among the mankind, uh, basically there is the 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 basically there's the three gunas. There's these natures, we talked about sattvic, tamasic, rajasic, but in the nature of the of this nature of creation, the the Brahmanas, Brahmins, Shachya, Vaisha, Shudra, uh, basically in the civilization, uh, God ordains priests. Then there are warriors, great warriors managers, administrators, rulers, rulers, as in governor of the whole province, which coincide with the concept of Kshatriya, Kshatriya, ruler, governor, one who governs, one who leads in battle. And then there are great leaders of commerce, people who uh, basically, who produce, who contribute, in my reinterpretation, the core producers, leaders of industry, leaders of commerce, of industry, and there are uh, providers of the needs of the society and the civilization, the great humanitarian workers, those who provide for the foundation of the civilization. So how can China realize this harmonious society? The key to realizing the society is not some dogmatic political book. The key is recognizing the diversity of human nature. And this diversity was already described by Lord God, Lord Krishna, in how he made this higher spiritual order based on individual will, individuality. Brahmins, Kshatriya, Vaisha, Sudra, and by a cohesive conception, we know that the, that the, the national flag has four stars. And the Guru describes that in how he describes this universal nature of civilization, which can be conceptualized as these four high-level concepts, this fourfold spiritual order. So then, the key to building social harmony is to understand, to meditate upon the words of God in the Bhagavad Gita. And to paraphrase what Lord Krishna said, he said in a time of turmoil and injustice that he, as Lord God, the Supreme Person of God, he comes down in the human form. 
but the human beings will ridicule him. Does that sound familiar? Who does that sound like? The person of God takes on human form, but he is ridiculed by his own people. I see parallels to Jesus of Nazareth. So, you see the many avatara. The Buddha as avatar of Vishnu. Then you see that one God in many forms, the one God created mankind, and he takes on many forms to, to different civilizations. But to build a powerfully cohesive society is to meditate upon the words of Lord Krishna, to meditate upon the words of the Bhagavad Gita, a direct testimony, a direct verbatim dialogue not basically a priest or a scholar writing things down. A direct divine dialogue. God speaks directly to his beloved disciple, Arjun. The Bhagavad Gita is the direct word, the direct revelation, the direct dialogue of God, unfiltered, unaltered, unedited, direct dialogue, the most the most di direct, the most pure, without any alterations, the divine dialogue witnessed, the one who witnessed this dialogue between Krishna, Sri Krishna, and Arjun. With that, let us Meditate. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Ram, Hare Hare.